Hello, I'm happy to continue with part two of my short talks on cognitive behavioral therapy. Last time we left off with talking about the model that was developed by Christine Podesky and Greenberger uh, around 1993 and uh, it has held up very well as a model to be used in uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. We all live in a current environment of situations, and in those situations, we respond to them with our physical sensations in our body. We have feelings or moods. We have behaviors, and we also have automatic thoughts. I'll go into this a little bit more detail as uh, we proceed in the uh, different parts. In addition to that, uh, the Beck model also includes the fact that we have early childhood experiences that lead to core beliefs, schemas, although core beliefs and schemas are not identical, but we don't need to go into that level of detail at this point. And then those core beliefs that we form in early childhood turn into critical beliefs or sometimes called conditional beliefs. And those then act, are activated by our experiences. So our conditional beliefs are activated and that leads to our automatic thoughts. Those things that just kind of automatically respond within the mind. Again, I'll go into more detail about that. So we have automatic thoughts, and those automatic thoughts are relying on our conditional beliefs, and those conditional beliefs are dependent upon our core beliefs that go all the way back to our early childhood experiences in many cases. In cognitive therapy, we're always interested in how things are affecting us in the here and now. But we also include those things that are related back from our early childhood experiences. So when we do the activity that is suggested on pages 7 to 14 in the second edition of Mind Over Mood by Greenberger and Podesky, we also look at how we can understand our own current environment in terms of the physical sensations and moods and activities and also our thoughts. And we also can bring to our awareness, you know, what are the challenges and situations that we're trying to figure out and what resources do we have in our own abilities to be able to handle this or the resources that we have in the friends and community that are around us. So let's look at uh, also the fact that this will be, a f affect, be affected by our early childhood experiences and our core beliefs and our conditional beliefs, etc. So let's use an example here. Here we have an example of a person who lost their job. And this person also had a father who lost their job, and he was pretty unhappy, ir irritable when he lost his job. The child remembers this. And then when a person loses their job and they have this experience, then we get concerned and distressed perhaps sometimes. What are other people going to think of them? And then sometimes then the economy uh, has a big problem when the person grows up, the person has uh, runs into an economic difficulty, perhaps some kind of uh, economic downturn or even a pandemic, and then the person loses their job and they wonder, what are people going to think of me? They're going to think ill of me, perhaps. So as we look more deeply into this, we begin to see that this will affect their conditional beliefs, their beliefs about themselves, their automatic thoughts are affected. Oh no, what are people thinking about me now in this situation? Physical sensations might be uncomfortableness, maybe even a stomach ache or a headache or something like that. And what feelings they have might be sadness 
or fear or anxiety being in those situations or depression. And then the behaviors might be to avoid situations where people are going to say to them, oh, what are you doing? Oh, now, what's your new job? How's that job search going? And oh, the person might remember, oh, that's, this is very unpleasant, so I'm going to avoid social situations. And then they will stay home when maybe their family wants to go out and do something social. Maybe they're invited to a picnic, and the person says, oh, no, I'm not going to go. So now they're doubly upset. They're upset that they have this recollection that people are going to judge them, and then on top of that, they're going to have this feeling of, I'm not being such a good father or a good husband. I'm leaving my family behind in these situations. And uh, I'm not going with them to be supportive and having a good time. Instead, I'm just being miserable. And then, of course, they're passing that experience on to their own childhood experiences as well. So these experiences that the person has uh, will affect them and then cause them perhaps to have a depressive reaction. And this depressive reaction is then what we call the, uh, the, the triad of depression, where a person is having negative thoughts about themselves, they have negative thoughts about the world, they have negative thoughts about the future, all of those things become negative, and then the person says, oh, I'm depressed, feeling badly about myself, feeling badly about how the world is, feeling badly about the future. So, for example, in this pandemic, the person might think, oh, I don't have the right skills to be able to get a new job. The, the world is uh, in this uh, terrible condition. You know, we, we have to be so careful, and they've laying off so many people all over the world, all over at least my world and my community. In the future, this is going to last such a long time. Oh, my goodness, you know, I'm never going to be able to find a job. So all of these thoughts about the self, world, and future feed in, are fed by this negativity, and that causes the person to be depressed. This is somewhat different than anxiety, and I'm just going to share with you this uh, model of how anxiety is a little bit different. Anxiety is fed mostly, not so, certainly by negativity, but also by avoidance. So a person will have this over-exaggeration of what danger may be in front of them in the world. And they also might have an underestimation of their own coping abilities. And that will lead to also to have the underestimation of what resources that they might have in the uh, community or the friends or the network that they might have. So this also can play into the role of how a person feels about themselves. So when they have this estimation that they're unsafe and, uh, and that this challenge is not something that they could meet, uh, they end up with perhaps helpless assumptions that then cause them to avoid even more. So when we talk more in our next sessions about uh, anxiety and depression, we can see how these different aspects uh, feed into each other. And sometimes a person will go more towards the past and focus about on depression, where depression has a lot to do with how we feel about things in the past. Or they may focus on the future. Oh, what's going to happen next? And this is more likely to bring up feelings of anxiety. Distress about the future has a lot to do with anxiety. So when we spend more time in the past, oh, depression can result. When we spend more time in our mind in the future, anxiety can result. This is why it's very good to learn how to be in the present and not focus so much on the past or on the future, except where it's functional. It's good to be able to focus on the future if you're going to go somewhere and you need to pack your suitcase. It's good to focus on the past when you're remembering good times that you've had or things that you need to 
use to be able to help you in the present moment, but excessively being involved in the past and future creates even more trouble. There's been good research on this by um, Gilbert and Killingsworth at Harvard that show that people who, uh, generally speaking, are pretty much only in the present about 53% of the time. They're distracted about 47% of the time. That's quite a bit. And it turns out the more time that you spend in the past or in the future and not in the present, the more likely you are to have emotional difficulties of anxiety and depression. We'll f discuss this even in more detail in our other sections. I want to thank you very much for your attention today, and please fill out the five-part questionnaire that has to do with your uh, model of understanding your thoughts and feelings. I look forward to talking to you later. Thank you.